CataractCoach.com. Soon exfoliation in a 90-year-old. So pearls for success, including determining zonular laxity. Here's that patient. Maximum dilation has been achieved here with 10% phenylephrin, tropicamide, cyclopentylate, and that's what you get. About a 5 millimeter dilation. You can see extensive pseudo exfoliation material on the anterior lens capsule. This patient also does have pseudo exfoliation glaucoma, and she's being treated by a glaucoma specialist who sent her over just for the cataract surgery. And the glaucoma specialist will be doing some sort of more aggressive glaucoma procedure in the future. So we're doing just the cataract and no MIGS, no minimally invasive glaucoma procedure. So putting some anesthesia in the eye, that's some preservative-free lidocaine 1% cut with BSS 50-50. And you can see that didn't really help much more with the dilation. So let's get this thing nice and sharp focus. And we'll start this case here. I'm going to speed up the video to about one and a half speed. And that's just so we can get through the whole thing in about five minutes. I know how you guys like a five minute video. So there's the viscoelastic going in. We'll make our main incision. We're gonna have a nice good size rectus here. Now the good news is if you're 90 years old and you have pseudo exfoliation and you're presenting to me and there's not a tremendous amount of zonal laxity already, I have good prognostic ability of guessing your future. So there's five millimeters. We're gonna poke in the lens capsule. There's a little bit of wrinkling of the lens capsule, but it's not terrible. And so getting that rex is done just about at the pupil margins. This is about a five or maybe five and a half millimeter rexes. Do not make a baby rexus here. Remember, these eyes are more prone to getting capsule contraction, capsule phimosis. So you don't want a baby rexus. So five and a half would be great or five millimeters. Going to do some hydrodissection here. Again, luckily during the rexus creation, I noticed that it was reasonable zonular support. Also, we keep in mind what's the AC depth in the pre-op testing and now on the table. So think about this, if the zonals were terrible, on the pre-op testing, when the patient sitting up at your equipment, you would notice a shallow AC, let's say two and a half millimeters. And then they get on the OR table and they're supine lying on their back and the cataract and lens and iris all fall backwards and then they get a four millimeter deep AC. Luckily in this patient, it's about constant, three millimeters across the board. That's a good sign. So good prognostic signs are, you see the patient has a reasonable dilation, which is in this case about a five millimeter dilation. That's pretty good. The, typically the more pseudoexfoliated material there is in the eye, the less the dilation is. Also looking at that AC depth and seeing if it changes. Is the sitting up AC depth shallow and then the lying down on your back supine AC depth a lot more? That's a sign of zonal laxity. Or even in the pre-op period, a longer or normal axial length of let's say 24 millimeters, but an AC depth of two millimeters. That's probably not a good sign either. That indicates a laxity of the whole lens iris diaphragm. So you can see you're being just very cautious. The nucleus was chopped in half in the bag, just trying to take out the first half. Luckily, it's not super dense for a 90-year-old, so I'm pretty happy about that. And we're watching carefully here. You're going to give the second half out, making sure that there's really good support. Then we're not seeing the rexus shift around or move. That's an important thing. And we're going to notice that even more when we do the cortex removal. One of the things I encourage you to do is as you do the cortex removal here with the IA probe coming up, make sure that the lens capsule rexus is not moving. So we'll clean up the cortex, get that little fragment out there. And as we take out the cortex here, make sure that you don't see the capsule rexus coming towards you. Or even if you break zonules, you'll get that capsule rexus going from the round sign to the D-shaped sign. So the D-shaped capsule rexus shows you the quadrant in which you've lost some zonular support. Luckily, in this case, it all looks pretty good. Now, the question is, do you put in a CTR, a capture tension ring? In this case, I'd say no. I don't think it's really needed. I think we're going to put in a single piece of acrylic lens in this eye. This patient is going to do very well. And I think this is going to last the patient a good 10 years. So I'm not expecting any late dislocation of the capsule bag plus eye well complex. So I don't think you're going to have to suture this lens into position to this in the sclera or whatever in the future. If you did think there was that laxity, sure, put a CTR in, put a three-piece lens in, whatever you desire. But I think in this case, it's really not that big of an issue. And so, and again, the patient is 90 years old and mathematically or statistically speaking, the patient probably not going to live to be 110 or 120. And so this patient, if I can give this patient 10 solid years of really great vision with a minimally invasive procedure here, I'll take it. Remember too, this patient is going to be followed up by the glaucoma doctor for further treatment in that regard. My job is simply to help the patient become pseudophagic and of course, achieve that plane of outcome. 
in that regard too, the, the lens we put in here is a monofocal lens. So aiming for a plano refractive outcome, this patient was a little hyperopic to begin with, a little bit of astigmatism, and we'll get that all addressed. End of the case here, we're going to put a little triumph syndrome. My friends, that is just a quell inflammation. There's no vitreous nasi. A little moxifloxacin coming here at the end just to make sure, and that looks like a pretty good case. Thanks for watching.